Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I hope you're all well. Today we are going to be making some beautiful Valentine's Day cards, something like this, uh, using handmade seed paper, which uh, I'm going to show you how to make. I've shown you this paper here, which uh, I made a long time ago um, myself. Um, and in a bookmark tutorial earlier, I think it was last month, we, uh, we used some of that paper for, for these bookmarks, which I'm sure you will have seen on the channel. Um, so but this time I wanted some pink paper like this. Pink being the colour of love or something like that. Um, so I had to dig out my paper making equipment, which meant um, disinterring my uh, frame and decal. And uh, this is a very interesting little contraption. It's exactly the same as what they use to make <coughs> um, proper paper, like arches, watercolour paper of reputed fame, and so on and so forth. Uh, only it's a bit smaller than, than what they use. Anyway, so I will show you how to use that. And what's more, in order to remember how to do it, do you know what I did? I went to Skillshare. I went on to Skillshare and I looked through their catalogue, which is extensive and takes some time to investigate. And I found a very good little video on how to make handmade paper, which I followed and which I will link you to in the description below the video. And Skillshare are kindly sponsoring this video, which is great. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of great classes to choose from. The great thing about Skillshare for me is that once I've become a member, I can take as many classes as I want with no extra payment to make. My membership of Skillshare is helping me make interesting videos for my channel. The class I mentioned, which inspired this video, is by Mae Babcock and is called Basic Paper Making from Recycled Materials. And when I'm not working on the channel, I can find classes to help with my hobbies which include knitting and crochet, sewing, upcycling furniture, cooking and writing. And you can prioritise your self-care and wellness too by using Skillshare. There really is something for everyone. There are so many reasons to join Skillshare, starting with the one month free trial you get if you use the unique link in the description below. All Skillshare classes are ad-free and there are new classes every week. Plus the whole catalogue is now available with subtitles in several languages. I've put links to some of the classes I've enjoyed recently in the description below, and I encourage you to use the unique link which gives the first 1,000 viewers a whole month free on Skillshare. And now, let's get started. This is a piece of um, Arches Love is for Daylis paper. It's about 8 by 10 and I'm going to fold that in half with the rough side on the outside, the smooth side on the inside. That works perfectly for making a greetings card because the rougher side is ideal for watercolour and the smoother side is ideal for pen and ink. So you can write your message on the inside if you want to do some nice calligraphy. Um, that would be ideal. So this is excellent paper for making cards because of that characteristic. Um, and what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to, this is a trial me because uh, I haven't, this is my, this is how I practice in the studio. So that's 13 and a half centimetres. Um, I need to do, divide that in half. So that is six and three quarters. So half is around about there. And this is just a, a rough indication because I want to get the centre of the heart roughly in the middle. Now you could use a template to draw the heart or you could just um, freehand it. And I'm going to do that. But if you do give yourself a bit of a guide, then if you don't like what you've done like that, that's not quite right, just rub it out and do it again. I use a, a shaving brush. Never been used for anything except for getting rid of the bits of paper 
uh, uh, rubber that I rub off. Okay, so that will do. It doesn't need to be perfectly um, symmetrical. And then I'm going to put, um, I did a sketch somewhere here. So I had two ideas for um, designs. This idea, I had a heart and I was going to draw a little tag to hold it, pretend tag, and then put some nice leaf patterns. This is just the first thing I came up with. And then I decided to go with flowers. Um, so that's what I'm going to do and practice that now. And uh, I'm going to put a um, uh, slogan on the top, a message on the top and on the bottom. The bottom one's going to obviously say, Happy Valentine's Day. So I'm going to use my Viviva pan watercolours today. This is really uh, nice. These are super vivid, transparent watercolours by Viviva, made in India. And um, you can order them direct from their website. I'll put a link below if you want to buy some of these. They're really nice. It comes in a kind of cork um, container there, a little... Um, uh, paint holder made of corks it makes it really really light and kind of organic feeling which is nice it makes a change from the metal the tin which is sort of much more perhaps more practical lasts a lot longer but this is nice um lovely colors really good colors there a good range of colors warm red and a cool red and a couple of yellows and and they make they mix really well too this is how it looks when it's swatched out um, yeah, so I thought I would use those for this. Um, I'm going to use a, if I can find it, a paper palette to mix on. Um, this is originally designed for um, oil or acrylic mixing, but it works really well for watercolour too. So since I have some, I thought I would use them. Um, wait, waste not, want not. And I'm going to use my uh, water pen from Kiritaki, which I really like. And uh, the way you fill these up when you get it, you unscrew it there at the barrel, then you just take your jar of water, put that in and give it a squeeze. A few bubbles will come out and then it's full. And just squeeze it, uh, screw it back on, and there you're done. So here we go. This is a practice, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, if we want a a nice um, pale orange colour or peach. Mix a little bit of red. But see how strong that is? It's unbelievably strong. You just need a um, piece of old towel handy to dry your brush a, bit, a little bit. And then we'll start up here. And when you want green, you can have a nice there's a nice green ready made there. This one here. It's quite a nice leafy green. Put a bit of red with it and you get a softer green. Like that.
We're going to keep this really simple. If you haven't tried a water brush before, do give it a go because it's quite fun and really easy. And with your roses as you put them in, don't worry too much about them looking like roses, just think about the colour and the arrangement. Make the leaves different sizes if you possibly can. When you need to clean your brush, you just um, dab it on the paper towel. If you want more examples of painting roses uh, as you're doing your frame, a lot of my videos can give you some help with that. I've put some links in the description below that you might be able to find and refer to if you need a little bit more help. So you'll want to paint roses all around the heart shape to make a nice heart shaped frame. And then we're going to make some pretty pink seed paper, handmade paper. And then once that's done, we'll make a paper heart to go in the center of your rose frame. And now let's make some paper. So this paper is made from old used copy paper, which um, I'm gonna tear up and put into this blender here. Fill it about half full, and then I'm adding some red paper, which I'm hoping is going to give me some pink paper once it's all done. And then I'm gonna put about three quarters full of hot water on top of the paper, give it a bit of a stir around. You can see the dye already coming out of the red paper. And then we're going to turn it into soup, stick it in the blender, turn it on, it takes about a minute to do ordinary copy paper. And you end up with this pulp. Hopefully you've got rid of all the big lumps. If you don't think it's gonna be bright enough for your purposes, you can always add some paint. And now I've got a storage box here, which I've half filled with cold water and just pouring in the pulp and giving it a stir around so that it's evenly distributed. And also at this point, I'm collecting seeds from, this is lavender seed, I'm going to pop some of that in with the pulp so that hopefully once it's all mixed in it will um, combine with the pulp to make paper. Now this is the frame that I use. It's a decal and a mould together, two pieces of wooden framing with some mosquito netting in the middle which catches the pulp and gives you a lovely layer of what's going to be pulp paper at the end of it. Just draining off the surface water a little bit, the surplus water and I'm removing the frame. And if the cap will let me, I'm going to just plop that down onto a J cloth, soaking up some of the excess water with a sponge or two. And um, then very quickly, with no hesitation, just lift. And there you are, the sheet of paper, another J cloth and a thick towel, pressing down to pick up some of the surplus water and then turn over and repeat. And then once we have done that, we're going to be able to peel off the J cloth and reveal a sheet of paper underneath. Now you can leave it to dry on the other J cloth or you can do what I did, which was just to peel it off. I wanted to make sure <clears throat> it was going to work okay. And, um, and it did. So you can see the seeds embedded there. You leave it to dry overnight and then the next day, perhaps if it's not quite dry or you want to speed it up, you can whack it with a hair dryer and lo and behold, real paper. Now to make the heart. I've printed out a selection of heart shapes and I've chosen this shape and I've drawn around it with a Sharpie so that it's the size that I want. And now I'm going to use my light box and use that to help me to trace that shape onto a sheet of paper. So I'm gonna choose one, which is a nice one, like that, it's got some lavender and some other things. And I'm going to lay it over the top of the heart that I outlined in black. And um, 
on top of my light box here, I can see through the paper where the heart um, is outlined. And then I'm going to attempt something here which will give me a deckled edge. So I'm taking my water brush. You could use a regular brush as well, but you'd have to keep dipping it into, into water. And I'm going to paint around that line just in water and just take it slowly, but just go around that shape, wetting the handmade paper in the shape of a heart. And then you just wait a second or two. Remove your light box. And then I've only done this a couple of times myself, so if I make a mistake, don't blame me. And then I'm going to try to separate as neatly as I can the heart from the centre of the paper just by pushing it away because where it's wetted, the same, same as what you do with watercolour paper, ordinary watercolour paper will do the exact same thing if you want a deckled edge. And just go round. I'm using a bone folder here to help me to do that. And then, so now we have a heart shape. And when that's dry, you'll have a heart shape with seeds embedded into it. If you want to just trim a little bit of it away to make sure the shape is good. You can do that too. And then you might want to actually, I think I might pull that piece out. So now we have our heart. This heart has seeds embedded in it, so you give it to the one you love, um, or a friend. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it in the centre of this floral heart here, and I'm going to glue it on there, and then I'm going to write a slogan at the top. So we'll see how that goes. So there we are, two little examples of our super pretty little Valentine's card. Um, I put uh, the message, love is all you seed. And you remember, love is all you need, love is all you seed, ha ha, very funny. Um, but anyway, that is the message on the front there. Then on the inside, you could write out instructions for what to do with this little piece of seed paper, or you could put another whole piece of paper on the inside and write your message on that. A uh, whole piece of seed paper, you know, another one of these. And uh, then somebody who receives it can just plant it in the garden and watch the seeds grow. So, or alternatively, you could attach, if you don't want to go to all the trouble of making special seed paper, you could attach a little packet of seeds on the inside that somebody could sow in the garden. So it's a lovely idea, I think, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me do that. Um, super easy, have fun, and uh, if you want other rose ideas, do take a look at some of our other videos that we did last year for Valentine's Day, and there's a special Valentine's Day um, roses playlist as well, so if you go to the channel you'll be able to find that, so hope you enjoyed that, take care, and I'll see you all again tomorrow. Bye everyone, bye bye.